anyway, the point is, is <clears throat> the e-collar has, has been a game changer. And for my life, like before I was even working with dogs professionally, I was like, wait a minute, you're telling me that I can, and then, whoa, right? And so the breakdown is fairly simple. <clears throat> and I think it's more important for the handler to understand what they're using <clears throat> versus the actual piece of equipment, right? Mm -hmm. Super important for the dog because you're responsible of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and it's just like, it's, it's like so many different other things that we, we have a cap on or we have limitations or rules upon. And um, like driving, right? Like I'm not so worried about the parked car sitting right there. I'm more worried about the driver who doesn't know how the hell to drive. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's really, really important to understand, how, you know, where's your owner's manual of how to use these things? Because then we can then go out and say, well, wait a minute. Let me see your dog do this, you know, and you can literally snap your fingers and make your dog down in the middle of the field with other dogs because you can reach out and communicate to them. Mm -hmm. So I want to break down the, the communication behind the e-collar and why it's so effective and why it's helped me save dogs' lives, but also help dog owners and their dogs tremendously. First thing is, is of course, to the non-e-collar users, shock collar, bad, right? But at the same time, we don't, we don't then call death traps to every car that's driving around because some idiot was an idiot, right? And also to be fair, um, what we did 10 to 20 years ago is entirely different from what we did now. When I say internet to people in high school, they don't know what dial-up is, right? But like I do, because I used to have it, and I used to have the cord that went to the wall. You catching my drift here? So here's my cord. And the point is, is we, we've advanced in technology tremendously and we're benefiting from it. Like I couldn't run my business the way that I do and work with people all over the world without the, 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 the progression in technology. Why limit our dogs to that? And the reason is, is because 15 years ago they used it strictly as punishment. They used it, only, that's all it was. It had one level and it was just ouch. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that that would, I would consider a shock collar, right? And some people are like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do that to my dog. But I don't, I don't care what they do. Um, but <laughs> a couple things. You could go to PetSmart and you could go to Petco and buy a 30 to $60, maybe it'll say electric collar, I'm not sure. I don't even know, I haven't looked, maybe I should. And it'll only have ouch, ouch and oucher for the most part. And you may get like a beep or a vibrate, um, but that's all association, the corrective, type of, type of uh, mechanism and tools. So it's just associating and correcting certain things. But the thing about the e-collar is, is if the dog doesn't know what it is, it freaks them right out. So they associate, it, it, let me put it to you this way, a invisible fence is a perfect example of like what a shock collar is or what you go buy in stores that has two or three levels. Um, they associate certain things with um, unpleasant things, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, when you put your flags out for your, your invisible fence, because the American family would never put a shock collar on dog, but they'll get the invisible fence that has like the beautiful, you know, golden retriever on the side and the beautiful lawn, and like that's okay, right? Because that's what we do as marketing concepts, is like, this is okay. Um, and maybe it is and maybe it's not. But the point is, is that is the same type of, of, of conditioning that like you're using if you just correct a dog all the time. They may get it, they may not, or they may, but if they don't get it, it completely can mess them up. So anyway, you put the perimeter out of flags and the dog goes by it and all of a sudden they get nailed or bit by this thing and they're like, holy shit, I hate that. I don't want to go near that again. And then you go, oh yeah, my dog knows the whole perimeter. My dog knows every single square inch of this property and knows where not to go. True, but they don't actually know your property. They just are associating that stump or that part of the, the area of the yard of, Pain. The application of the e-collar should be associated as pleasant. It should be associated as um, a communication-based tool, always. Because what's the point of putting a, a tool on a dog and like turning it up like everyone else thinks you have to do, and you're like, no, and the dog's like this. And you're like, no, and the dog's like this. And you're like, ah, oh, I hate that. I don't want to see my dog like, I'm like, no shit, that's terrible to do. Why would you ever do something like that, right? And then a lot of times, what people also do is they don't understand the equipment. So they're on a two, and they're like, sit, and the dog sits. And they're like, but my dog didn't jump. It, they're supposed to jump, you know, or 
Fido, come. And the dog's like, nah. And then they, they crank it, and then they make the dog jump. And that's not how you want to apply the e-collar. It's an association tool, all right? And so <clears throat> what you want to do is associate your voice with the e-collar. It's a conditioning thing. That's all. That's all it is. And I'll explain that in a, in a little bit um, more depth here in a minute. But the most important thing I want people to understand with e-collars is it's, it's not a 100% it's not a, a corrective tool, and it's not always at first a corrective tool if you're doing it properly. It should be, hey, buddy, this is now your new communication. And they go, hey, you're turning this on, aren't you? You go, yep. Like the other concepts I've been working with, with working with dogs off leash, is we're starting to notice their, their engagement with us off leash is entirely different. And we always would say, shame on the dog for not listening, but in reality, we're training for four to six feet. So when they're 30 to 50 to 60 feet away, they're clocked out. Yeah. How are you gonna get their attention? How is it fair for them? You know what I mean? Yeah. So if we can then take that tool and use that tool to say, here is this now, and they go, oh, that's interesting. You could touch me from here without correcting them, without shocking them, without throwing them out of their out of their gill. You could say, hey, I got you here still. And they're like, really? And you're like, yeah, watch, come here. And then it shuts off when they get to you, just like you would with the leash pressure. So it's a pressure system. And so that's like one of the biggest theories I've kind of been messing with a bit is dogs aren't bad off leash. Dogs just can't be trained off leash with anything else but an e-collar. You have to be able to apply pressure somehow. Or you could sit here with a megaphone and go, please, come back, please. Like, I'm begging you. I really don't want you to get hit by a car. Yeah. That dog's gonna eat you. Please, come back, right? Yeah. And so to be able to then literally reach out wirelessly, like, I can start my vehicle from here. How freaking cool is that? Yeah. Right? And we're all, like, super happy about all these advancements and, you know, you can do Apple Pay and shit like that. How about being able to literally reach out and touch your dog with the remote from a half a mile away and get them to come back to you when you're on a hike? Mm -hmm. People are gonna be, like, oh, wow, that's magic. No, it's an e-collar. Yeah. But the problem is is, is the, the people who don't understand it that say it's a shock collar. I get, I get messages and comments all the time. I'm gonna put a shock collar on you. I'm like, I do it every day. I put e-collars on myself every day to show people what it is. That's my job. Right. So I wanna show you the process of the e-collar transition as far as timing goes because I think it's insanely important for you to understand that first mm -hmm. and then I'm going to use it on her okay yeah. okay so I'm going to show you with Krista um, the timing aspect of how you're supposed to be doing this so there's a lot of different functions on e-collars and one of those functions is a vibrate so do you hear that yeah. so that's going to the bowl which is then making a noise mm -hmm. So I don't use the vibrate very often because like you said, it's kind of intense and the dog's like, what the hell is that? So I usually just use the stimulation, which is much less than this. But I want to show you the timing about how you should be doing this, okay? So just go that way, Krista. And Krista's going to be kind of my fake dog. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, Krista, come. And then as soon as they come to you, you shut it off. And then as soon as she says, ooh, squirrel, Krista, come. And then you shut it off. Do you understand? Yeah. So same thing what we're doing here. So um, th the most important thing for the concept is, is well, it doesn't, yeah, but they're not like, they're not freaking out. Like, it's a lot of people are like, I want my dog, like, I want to see something. Like, I want them to like, it's like, what is this thing? And it's, it's just a low level stimulation that they can feel. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever been to the chiropractor, they have a little stimulation system that they use that's kind of like this little low stim. And, you're, and that's what they call it. Here's a stim. It's not like a, here, I'm going to shock the shit out of you. No, no, no. Yeah. It's a low-level stim that you can feel. It almost feels good. Mm -hmm. And actually, it does. That's why they use it in chiropractic therapy, yeah. right? So same thing. So here's the association of how the e-collar works, right? So you start off on a very, like, low, like small level. And all you do is you then, you have the dog in the leash. And then you say, okay, Krista, sit. Good. And they go, huh. And then sit, and they go, whoa, you, okay. But I have them on a leash and they understand that like I'm here, right? So picture it this way. So now I'm working with, with Krista or I'm working with a human and every time I said, hey Krista, 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 and I said something, right? She's gonna go, okay, that means you want something, right? So now picture it this way. So three days go by and then Krista just go that way. Right? And then actually just go into the storage room real quick to the left, the first one. 
So three, day go, three days go by, and I say, Krista, tap, Krista, tap, Krista, tap, Krista, tap, Krista, tap. And she's always going to go, what? And I'm like, can you, can you do this? So now if she's going there for a second, so now if she's off, off, off in the distance, right, and I can't see her, but then I go, oh, right? So yeah. she, she understands that this is me wanting something. So then she's going to go, what the hell do you want, guy, right? And I'm going to go, come. And they go, oh, I know that. Sit. That's the other important thing about e-college training is you never, where I'm like, Chris, the green screen. She's like, I've never learned that. What does that mean? Yeah. You always go, hey, come. You know that. Sit. Good. And it's association. Mm -hmm. But the key is, is as soon as they're behind door number two, this still means something. But you don't have to touch them, and you don't need a leash. So now you can go hiking, swimming, off leash, anywhere. Um, and then you can also say, hey, Krista, you know, go back to your seat or whatever, and get them to do this all through this. And it doesn't hurt them, it doesn't scare them, if you do it right. Yeah. So that's the transition, and that's the same thing we're going to be doing, is, hey, sit. And they're like, oh, and then they sit. And you're like, hey, good. And they're like, hmm, I wonder what that was, mm -hmm. right? So let me see the, um, so I can't feel that, and then put it on your wrist, and I know you won't be able to feel it, right? Don't, you don't feel it at all, right? And it's not meant to hurt. Yeah. That's, where, that, that's the misconception is like, uh, you know, people come in like, oh, those shock collars? And to me, I'm like, here we go, right? But at the same time, I get to resurrect like, no, they're not, but here's what they are. Mm -hmm. Because then the dog has a better life because they can go exercise and do all this stuff. So I want to use um, my collar. That way there's no magicry going on where yeah. it's like, oh, <laughs> different collar, different stuff. Nope is when I ask her to sit, I want you to hit that top button when I ask, okay? And it's the same level, three, right on there, right? Yeah. That you couldn't feel, I couldn't feel my face, right? And then go ahead, sit, done. Sit. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. She goes, well, that was different. And I go, yeah. And she goes, but it didn't hurt, right? She's not jumping, squealing. But you don't want to do like what you said before. It's like, well, do I just like correct them every time? Or do I just only correct them when they're bad? No. This is how you do it. So every time I ask her to do something, I want you to tap that for me. Okay. And I'm, the reason why I'm making you do it is because it's on three. Yeah. Because then I want you to think that I'm changing numbers in my pocket. It's the same thing. So I'm going to say, okay, heel. Good. And you tap. And then heel, tap. Heel, tap. Uh -uh. Sit, tap, release. Yes. Good. That's the same level I had on my face that I couldn't feel. The same level you had on you couldn't feel. Mm -hmm. And she's like, huh, right? So it's just, it's, it's just and, and the question I always get, do they feel that? Yes. Dogs are more susceptible to electricity than we are. We touch with electric stuff all day. Mm -hmm. So they're just a little bit more sensitive to it. And so now what's going to happen is just like I, what I did with Krista, is eventually I'm going to go way over here and start using it behind closed doors. And she's going to go, wait, do I still have to do it? Yep. Gotcha. Right? And she's going to go, okay. And she's going to work with me that way. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing. And it doesn't, do, it doesn't have any stress. It doesn't have any negative side effects. However, now if you crank that up to 77 and I said sit, she'd go, whoa, holy smokes. And then I would be an idiot. But then you would go, yeah, I don't want you touching that anymore. Yeah. You, wouldn't, right? you wouldn't blame it on that. Yeah. You'd blame it on me. And that's why I don't let anybody go home without the e-collar training, because they have to learn it. Mm -hmm. So it's an association tool, just like I just did with Krista. If I tap it, that means I want something from you. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll do is five to ten minutes a day, release. Good. So now what's happening is I'm not doing this, because this is the old school way of what I told you. How, this is how we communicate. Yeah. This is your dialogue. You know, when you hear that <laughs> noise, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Now we're starting to say, you got to listen to that now. And so I say sit, and I don't touch dial up. It's this new signal coming in, and I say, hey, sit. And they sit, and they go, oh, okay. And you go, yeah, we're going to do it again. And then again, and then tomorrow we're going to do it, and the next day we're going to do it. And then you're going to get it, and then I'm going to be able to do this. And, but same thing, I can say, hey, do this. And she goes, okay, that's yeah. it. You know, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm not saying that every e collar out there is used properly, because it's not. But... If you, this is the intentions of the, the, the production of the e-collar. Mm -hmm. And I've done a ton of behavior remodification with it too, because it's not physical. 
So I'm not physically saying, no, don't, and the dog turned around and getting pissed at me. I'm just sitting here going like this. No, don't. Boom. <laughs> and they're like, I'm like, yeah, just chill out, dude. Don't do that again. And then they don't, right? And it's association thing. So it helps me tremendously. And I think my advantage to, to the e-collar training in general is I have done all types of training. And I have worked with all different types of trainers in a very, very, like, this is it, the only way. And I'm like, mm, no, it's not. Yeah. Unfortunately for you and the dogs that you work with, no, it's not. Fortunately for me, I've seen, like, the repercussions of, they don't do it, they ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 my, my dog is my dog, my responsibility. If my kid runs out in the middle of the street and I say, oh, do you know why we're doing this? Do you know why this is bad?